So that very, very last question on the first uh, worksheet to, is to list all of the things that you do really, oh, sorry, of all of the things that you do really, really well, which two or three do you do best? Just jot down whatever comes up here. This is just, as I said, just that snapshot of getting an idea of where the beginning part is for you. And now what we're going to do is move on to your genius and value offer, which is Discovery Sheet 2. Now the reason behind this is just to delve into a little bit more about the qualities and uniqueness of you and the types of things that you admire. So let's work through this together. And this is all about now starting to get a little bit more of an idea of um, how you operate, how you tick, and perhaps how others see you. And part of discovering this giftedness and then this genius is so we can actually create that into a value offer or an offer of value of you that we were then able to overlay into your business development and then overlay into your marketing. Because people come to you and your business because of you. And we need to bring more of you, the real you, to your business. And that's where business becomes easy, efficient and a whole lot more fun. And you really, really take the pressure off yourself because you're allowed to be yourself and you're allowed to blossom and become that brilliance that is in within you. So in what Discovery Sheet 2, we're looking at the very first question is what are the qualities that you admire most in other people. Now you may remember as an example uh, on my website, if you came through and purchased the program through the website, I had Steve Jobs, um, Oprah Winfrey and um, Sir Richard Branson. Now they are people that I admire. I admire Steve Jobs' uh, simplicity and the way he does presentations. I love Oprah because she simply shines a light on others and she's a brilliant storyteller and who allows, has the ability to shine the light on others. And of course Richard Branson is that um, heroic larrikin that just is a massive adventurer. So you know he goes out there and gets things done. So that's the sort of brilliance that we're bringing to you through this self-discovery process and the number of little modules that we have within this element. So what are the qualities in other people that you admire most? Do you look for integrity? Do you look for honesty? What is it that you, when you consider the people that you admire, whether that's past, present or current people that you know, what are the qualities that you admire most? And just take your time with that. Pause the video as always whenever you need to and I'll just keep talking through them. The very next question is, what are your unique abilities or talents? What makes you special? So look at it this way. If you find this as difficult as I did in the beginning, look back retrospectively as to the themes or patterns of things that you've always done. So for me, I mentioned mixing and matching previously. Uh, my wardrobe in, in the prior example. Now that became very relevant for me because as I ended up discovering that mixing and matching is me seeing the individual, uh, the individual's giftedness and then mixing and matching them with other people and that was why through my business and through my life I could see that I mixed and matched and that's why I ended up doing so much work with joint ventures and collaborative partnerships because I could see how the puzzle pieces needed to fit. Um, and the individuals needed to fit to create magic and maximise what was already happening for them. So that was how I was able to leverage that. Now, you, if you find it difficult to know what your new, unique abilities, another way you can look at it is you can certainly ask a friend um, it, what they see in you, because often they will see it faster than you do. And it can be a, those sorts of comments or, or like, oh my God, you make that look so easy. How do you do that? If there's something that you get that sort of a comment or your friends get really annoyed because you can just do it and they really struggle with it, that's a unique ability or, or a giftedness element. So have a look at that. The next question is, who are your heroines and heroes, alive or present, in myth or religious or in history that you really admire. 
So one for me is I really love Jerry Brockheimer movies, for example. But the reason I love his movies is there's always a team and the team always comes, overcomes major obstacles. And his theme across his movies are always the same. It's always the team against the world to create a great outcome. So that's that underdog, the overcoming, the, you know, magic at the end, save the world type stuff. Um, so have a look at those. And then there's uh, other elements, but that just gives you something to start with. It may be a particular um, um, action hero, for example, Iron Man or, um, you know, um, well, there's all sorts of different ones there that you can think of. I've got so many rattle around in my head, I'm getting tongue tied. Another thing to consider here when you're looking at, for your own giftedness is what are you constantly sharing? What do you regularly explain to your clients or friends? What conversations do you keep getting involved in? What, what's the theme there? That, could, that can be an insight for you as to something that A, you're passionate about, but you're naturally good at as well. Another great question is, what do those people, clients, family, friends, etc., keep coming back for? What do they want more of? And what would somebody pay you $100 to $200 an hour for? There is something that you do, and it may not relate to your business at all or your job or anything like that, but there's something that you do that people would pay a lot of money for. Now, I've got a girlfriend that's a high-flying executive in, in a big business, but on the weekend when she's at home, um, she makes these most amazingly tasty cakes, so like those really adult-tasting light cakes with alcohol in them uh, quite often and lots of fabulous things, but she dresses them up in a childlike way, so the cakes themselves are quite unique. They're adult, but they're they're captivating because they're a bit interesting and childlike. Now, she just does that for fun and that's something she does when she has people over in dinner parties and it can be even just, you know, she does that because she's having a barbecue. But I would happily play, pay for her to do a cake like that if I was having a dinner party because they're just so extraordinary. But that's not what she actually does as a job. That's something she does as a hobby or in her case for stress relief. The other question is, what do you offer that nobody else does? What do you do that nobody else does? What makes you different? What makes you a little bit weird and a little bit quirky and outside the box? Sometimes you might be a little bit embarrassed by it because it is a bit outside the box and a bit quirky. Write those things down, those deep, dark things that... Um, you know you do that nobody else does. Or you could get into, like I do, into my sometimes arrogant moment and go, why don't they do it like this? It needs to be done like that because I know I could would do a particular thing much better um, and I've got a different way of doing it. So my, my version of better is I've got a different way of doing it and I can see that I can make it quicker and faster. Um, so those sorts of things. What's that one or two things that's always been at the back of your mind that you've always wanted to do or you often think about but you've not yet expressed it? You may not have even mentioned it to anyone. What, is, what are the things that you are most thanked for? What do, you, what do you have that you could offer valued clients, so, such as valued clients, contacts to share? Do you have specific knowledge? Do you have great connections? Do you have a, a venue, a boardroom, or team members, or others? Now, this question's a little bit obscure and a little bit out of the box in this position, but let me give you some content, content, context around it. This is a question I often ask when I'm sitting down talking to people about collaborative partnerships and joint ventures. As an example, somebody will have a business that's got a brilliantly large boardroom um, that could be really great to run events in or customer focus events, which is something that I love and do a lot of with our clients to help them grow their business. 
but often that business doesn't realize how much of a value that boardroom would be. It's just something that they use occasionally. Another example when I'm sitting down with our clients talking about collaborative partnerships is they may have a real a tight-knit community of customers. There may only be, in this particular scenario, 10 or 20 customers, but they may be highly valued and they may be really close and have a lot of influence over them. Um, or you may have really specialised knowledge, or you might have written a book, or you might have written a paper that was really interesting and you got lots of accolades in. Now, that paper may go back to when you were at uni or when you, when you did something else. There's all those sorts of forgotten things or overlooked things that are massive opportunities potentially for you to share with other people. So if you think of anything there that you can add into what you have um, that could be deemed as value, just jot a few of those things down. This is just a quick discovery because we'll come back to this at a later stage, particularly if we do further work as it relates to building your business through collaborative partnerships and profiting from partnerships. So we're coming to the end of wrapping this up now and moving on to the courageous scenario. But what this is all about is grasping these insights and having a look and building the confidence in yourself and some of the unique things that are about you, your abilities. So you get, start to get a grasp of your own value. And what this does, it does help it eat uh, easier to talk with potential collaborative partnerships. It's easier to rally your crowd, the people that you have around you. It's certainly easier to talk to customers when you know that you actually do have great value. So this is all about building that value, not for other people, but for yourself. This is about you seeing the value in you and what you actually have to offer. So next we're going to move on to your courageous confidence and your uh, rallying your crowd.